how would you sort this mound of food out? Well, some food comes from the seeds of plants. Sometimes we eat the roots. Or stems. Or the leaves. We don't get much to eat from the flowers of plants. But the fruits go down very well indeed. Hello. Hello. In the previous programs, we've seen how the different parts of a plant each had their place in the story of how that type of plant survives. Seeds, leaves, flowers, every part is there for a purpose. So what job does the fruit do? Look at some of the fruit you might like to eat. If I cut open this orange, There are pips inside. It's the same in the middle of this apple. Look. And in the middle of this peach is a stone. What would happen if you planted any of these? Well, if conditions were right, they would grow into new plants. Pips and stones are really seeds. And the place you'll find the seeds is inside the fruit. In this melon, for example, look at all these seeds. Now, how many of you remember this? This was the mystery fruit that we left you with at the end of last week's programme. And if I open it up, inside, yes, you find seeds. In fact, these seeds are very young. They haven't developed much yet. And if they're in here, this must be the fruit of a bean plant. So to use the word fruit properly, it's a bit different from the way they use it down the market. Really, a fruit is a part of a plant that contains the seeds. And that could be things like oranges and berries, but also beans and pea pods. And if this has got seeds inside, yes, a tomato is a fruit too. All right. The fruit is the part of the plant with the seeds in. But what job does the fruit do to help the plant survive? Remember, plants are competing with one another for light or water or the minerals in the soil. It's a struggle to survive. Come over here with me. And I want to ask you what you would do if you were asked to sow some of these seeds in a tray of soil and you wanted to give the new plants a chance to survive, where would you sow them? Well, would you put them, for instance, down in this corner but the plant here, as you can see, is casting a shadow, so it's competing for all the light? No. Or would you put them all together in a clump where they're going to compete with one another once they start growing? No. A better plan is to spread them out, like that, where they'll all get a chance to get water and minerals and light. So spread them out, and then they'll have the best chance of growing into successful new plants. And it's the same with a plant growing in the wild. How are the seeds ready inside the fruit going to be spread out? Well, if it's a tasty fruit like a berry, you never know what might happen. Birds are very fond of berries, but of course, they're not interested in the pips. Some of the pips can fall to the ground and those pips are the seeds of a new tree. So one reason fruits are very tasty is to attract birds and animals. They spit out the seeds or they pass straight through them without being digested and so plants can reproduce themselves. A new plant will grow well away from the first plant. Squirrels like acorns and they often bury some to eat later. If they leave them too long, the acorn might grow into a tree because an acorn is the fruit of the oak tree and inside it is the seed from which a new tree can grow. Some fruits aren't good to eat, but they still need animals to help them spread. This type of fruit 
catches on animals as they go past. And then, with luck, it will fall off later and grow into a new plant. Other fruits with a special shape are ones that get spread out by the wind, like these. The fruits are carried and dispersed well away from the parent tree. And look at these dandelions. In some of them, the flowers have withered to leave the fruits, each with their own parachute to carry them far away. Other fruits are designed not to use air, but water. Have you ever wondered how plants spread to islands? This seed has started growing already after crossing the ocean. Some fruits stay on the plant and explode. That's one way of spreading your seeds. And how does our runner bean plant spread its seeds? Last week we saw it pollinated. The flower wilted away and the fruit grew. The fruit dries, shrinks, and fires the seeds away. One seed might land where the soil is good and the conditions are right, and it will grow. It puts down roots and sends up shoots. Then it twists itself round the nearest support and pulls itself up, with more leaves growing that take in energy from the sun. The flowers come, it's pollinated, it fruits. And so the story goes on. It's difficult to know where to stop the story of a plant. If things go well, the story never stops. Round and round. Seed, plant, flower, fruit, new seed, new plant, and so on. In a way, it survives forever. Something that goes round and round like that is called a cycle. Yes, like a, a bicycle, a bicycle, because Cycle is the ancient Greek word for wheel. And there's an ancient Greek story about another very important cycle, the cycle of the seasons, summer, autumn, winter, spring. The meaning is sort of hidden in the story. See if you can work it out. Zeus was the king of the Greek gods, and he had many daughters. One of them was Persephone a beautiful young girl. A dark spirit named Hades lived in the underworld beneath the ground. And when he saw Persephone, he wanted her to live with him in the darkness. Zeus agreed to this without asking Persephone or even telling her mother, Demeter. So one day, when Persephone was gathering flowers, the earth opened. Hades suddenly appeared and carried Persephone away into the underworld. Down into the depths of the earth. When her daughter did not come home, Demeter set out to find her. At last she learned the truth. And in a strange way, the sun spoke and told her all that had happened. Demeter was very angry and she left Zeus and the world of the gods and went down to live on earth. Now Demeter was the goddess of fruit and farming and she decided that nothing would grow on earth until her daughter was returned to her. Nothing grew. The farmers despaired and people were starving. They prayed to Zeus to do something. So Zeus had to send a messenger into the underworld. He told Hades that he must let Persephone free to return to the light above. Hades agreed, but he was very cunning. He gave Persephone part of a pomegranate to eat, and it was a rule that if you ate anything in the underworld, you had to go back to live there for four months every year. So Persephone came up out of the earth and lived with her mother again. And now Demeter allowed the earth to be fertile 
and crops grew once more. But because she had eaten in the underworld, every year Persephone had to go back into the earth. She had to spend a third of the year in the darkness to return again in the spring. Can you work out what the story means? Persephone is like a seed and the seed has to go into the ground and spend the winter in the darkness. Then in the spring, the new plants will grow and come up from the earth, just as Persephone did. That ancient story is really about the way people need their crops to grow every year, or else there'd be no food. We're very lucky in this country. In other parts of the world, if the crops fail, it means the people will starve. Britain is a rich country, and we buy food from all over the world. You can make a map of the world, something like this, and you can set out the food in the country where it grew. We get peppers from China, rice from India, there's oranges from Israel, and coffee and tea from Africa, bananas from the West Indies and South America, and wheat from Canada, food from all over the world. Of course, a lot of food is grown in this country too, but fruit and veg aren't the only things you'll find if you go down the garden path. have anything you like in your garden really if you're handy with a pair of shears into a house with a garden you didn't like. That's when you might need a sledgehammer. Now there's one type of garden that's very good for expeditions. At Alan Edwards School, they're going hunting. But they're not going to kill big game. They're looking for very small game, mini beasts. And they're not going to kill them. There's all sorts of discoveries to be made, if you look in the right place. Here they're trying to suck an ant into a special container. It won't hurt the ant, and they'll be able to look at it more closely. There are many different creatures to discover, in all sorts of places. This sort of garden isn't wild. It's planted with the sorts of plants that mini beasts like to live around. One important point 
is to put things back afterwards. After all, it's where the mini beasts live. One place you'll find insects is a compost heap. Compost heaps are very useful. They're full of the minerals that will help plants to grow. And in South America, there are some insects that make their own compost heap. These ants are taking leaves back to their nests to make a sort of compost out of them. And they use the compost to grow their own special food. Ants are gardeners too. The jungles and forests of the world are full of strange things. And who knows what's still to be discovered? New types of animals or insects? Or new plants that might be useful in curing diseases? But the forests are being cut down fast. Nobody knows for sure how fast the forests are being cleared. But roughly, imagine the size of a football pitch. That's how much forest is being burnt or cut down every single second. And in this country too, woods are being cut down and more and more land is being ploughed up. That means there are fewer places for animals and birds and insects to live in. So gardens are very important. More and more, they're vital for wild creatures to have somewhere to live. Wild animals can't survive without plants like these, and nor can we. So starting in your garden, find out as much as you can about plants. There's nothing on earth more important. There were plants living millions of years before there were people. The earth belongs to plants, really. But if we can learn how to do it, we can share the world with them and enjoy it. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>